his first game as an Ironman. Still has not seen the football. Andre Fury tiptoes down the sidelines and for those of you just joining us, Fury had a big gainer early in the ball game on a little flip pass from Cleo Lemon. And Andre Dury nearly takes this one to the house. So close to the sideline, just barely out of bounds. Two catches for 48 yards. So far, though, no number 80. They haven't even looked Copeland's way. And there we go. Welcome home, Jermaine Copeland. Well, the monkey's off his back. Now they need some of those 12 touchdowns from last season to start working into the equation. Copeland in motion, working in tandem with his wideout, Jeffrey Webb, number 19. Create a little confusion for the Argonaut or for the Stampeder defenders. Says he's still getting used to wearing that blue. So many years wearing red of Calgary. And a knockdown again, the rush coming. Four red jerseys in the grill of Cleo Lemon. You look at how important Jermaine Copeland and his experience are to the Argonaut receiving core. Jermaine Copeland, over 8,700 career receiving yards. The rest of the Argo receivers, starters and backups, we're talking about eight guys, about 1,500. Chad Lucas probably makes up for most of that. Those are some very inexperienced receivers. Borum again. Now the sun creeping out again as it sets. And a fumble. Picked up by Malik Jackson. Stampede Peters lucky to get that football back. 3 0 lead. Dion Murphy, the rookie returner, offs it up. And Jackson has it. It is their own Canada Day kickoff, a doubleheader today on Canada Day. Game two tonight, Calgary. Stamp and Peters lead the Toronto Argonauts 3-0. Quick hitch pass to Dion Murphy after Murphy had fumbled on that return, recovered by Malik Jackson. Burris goes immediately to him. Nice tackle made by Lynn J. Shell. Lynn J. Shell, the Toronto Argonaut top rookie in 2009. To the right side of your screen, he'll enter the picture, number 21. Shell right there beats the, bl the block from the receiver RJ Franklin. Steps up to stop Dion Murphy. Gain of about six and a half, seven yards almost. And up the gun. Very close to moving the sticks. John Cornish getting the touch again. John Huff had talked in the offseason about getting more touches to John Cornish. And so far tonight, we've certainly seen that play out. In fact, he's seen the football more than Joffrey Reynolds. It is a first down. Nine and a half minutes to go before halftime. Burris behind center this time with Reynolds in the backfield. Henry Burris almost caught from behind. Finds the receiver, Robbie Bryant, for a first down on the far sideline. Robbie Bryant ends up as the solo receiver to the right side of the field. He's going to push his man upfield and then work back to his quarterback. Romby Bright as he pushes his heart upfield gains him a little bit of separation here as the corner Byron Parker takes off deep leaves Bryant about 10 yards to catch that ball already tonight Henry Burris has used eight different receivers RJ Franklin overthrown on the near sideline it will be second down and 10 yards to go well, RJ Franklin's got about a 40 inch vertical but he wasn't going to get up to no. that one 
had a good chance to sit down with Henry Burris yesterday and talk about this new season and the disappointment of last year. And there certainly were some built-in excuses for the Stampeders last year with injuries to key players like Kenyon Rambo and Ryan Fellwell. And they still managed to tie for first place in the West, ended up in second place and got to the West Final. But they wanted nothing more than to play for the Great Cup in their home stadium, which they failed to achieve. Burris, strong arm, picked off by Lynn J. Shell. Shell, and he fumbles. And this is picked up by Jordan Younger wisely. Lynn J. Shell, who had only one interception last year on a bit of a crazy play. And Lynn J. Shell has his first interception and also a fumble on the same play. Then Jay Shell with terrific coverage there on Dion Murphy on that deep ball. Makes his break at just the right moment. Defensive player, maybe not quite used to carrying the football, a little sloppy. Who would have guessed? Nick Lewis never wanted to pass up an opportunity to hit something in blue. Pops it loose. Jordan Younger came up with the recovery for the Argos. Penalty flag. Leo Lennon. <laughs> with the pass to newcomer Jeffrey Webb out of San Diego State. Three seasons with the Kansas City Chiefs. And this will go against Toronto. And it has not been a dream start by any stretch for Cleo Lennon. Offside, Toronto number 16, five yard penalty, repeat first down. This is the second offside call against receiver Brandon Rideau. And this is something the Argos are trying to correct, is the penalty issues. By far, the most penalized team in the Canadian Football League last season. Already 55 yards in penalties in this football game. They can't put their offense in a hole like that. Lemon, little pump pick, looking downfield, no one home. Reverses field, in trouble, lets it fly out of bounds. And there's the experience of a Cleo Lemon who has been around in the NFL. We have seen a lot of quarterbacks for the Toronto Argonauts here, and some of the less experienced quarterbacks may have been prone to hang on to that football and have been on the turf. Well, Cleo Lemon looked like he was he was digging himself quite a hole there as he doubled back with that one. But we've seen him a couple times showing that veteran presence of mind to throw away the football rather than give up the sack and also the awareness to throw it out of bounds when he's throwing it away, not just chuck it up for grabs. Gail Robidet was giving chase. Second down and 15 yards now. And look out. Lemon dancing downfield and picked off. What an interception. Stampeders have the football. Well, Keon Raymond's going to get credit for the interception, but the guy who makes this play is the rookie free safety slash linebacker, Eric Fraser. The Canadian comes in, forces Lemon out of his rhythm, forces him on the run. He puts it up for grabs. One of the unsung heroes for the Stamps last year defensively, Keon Raymond, the man in coverage who outfights Andre Dury for that ball. First pick of the season for the Stamps goes to Raymond. Play action for Burris. Calls his own number, dives forward. More than half the first down yard. It's close to the midfield strike with just under seven minutes to go before halftime. And the Stamps go to a little bread and butter here. Henry Burris faking the handoff, taking off around the end with that football. Comes up with about eight yards. Bryant, R.J. Franklin split wide. Hand off up the middle to the rushing champion of the last two years, Joffrey Reynolds, and it's a first down for the Stampeders. Another new change for the Canadian Football League this year. The quarterbacks with speakers in their helmets as Henry Burris looks over to a familiar name and face, Dave Dickinson on yeah. the sideline. Well, his old Dickinson is the guy making the calls now. Offensive coordinator George Cortez 
moved on in the offseason. He's now with the Buffalo Bills. Dickinson, he collects the information down in distance from Pete Costanza upstairs and then passes on his play call to Burns. Reynolds again, tackled by Kevin Huntley. But we talked to Henry Burris a little bit about this system of communication and, and how efficient it's been. Usually, as we said, Dickinson is getting that down in distance from upstairs as immediately after the tackle's made. Relays his call to, to Henry Burris very quickly. Burris told us during the, the preseason, they were often actually snapping the ball with about 15 seconds left on the play clock. They had things down pretty well, and this will allow them to get more offensive plays in a game. Second and three over the middle. Franklin. First down. So, yeah, forgive Henry Burris for hearing voices. To me, it speeds up the process, speeds up the communication. Uh, allows offenses to get in and out of the huddle that much quicker, that much faster, uh, which allows us more time with the line of scrimmage to, you know, make the necessary audibles, make, make the ne necessary checks, uh, to get where you need to be uh, and allow yourself enough time to do so. However, on the flip side, you know, hearing Dave Dickinson's voice is not a sexy thing. There are penalty markers all over the place here. We'll let Glenn Johnson sort it out. However, if you're a quarterback and Henry Burris came into this league and a chance to learn from some great quarterbacks if you're going to have anybody talking in your ear why not a guy like dave dickinson yeah whether the the must have a draw, draw, draw turns nine, out or not five yard penalty repeat first down here is another offside penalty against adrian davis in his first game as a starter has been a back the last couple of years jim barker the former stampeder coach and general manager the last few years happy with that call the Toronto Argonauts have some young guys on the defensive line Kevin Huntley's there Ronald Clemens is there Other than that it's Adrian Davis we've seen Broderick Stewart for us doing a nice job mixing up snap -ups. Robbie Bryant to the 10 and inside down to the red zone Calgary Stampeders in that red zone or some teams call green zone inside the 20 were the most proficient team in the Canadian Football League last season. So it'll be interesting now to see where Henry Burris looks in that green zone. Last year, Jermaine Copeland had 12 touchdowns. You look at the receivers that the, the Stamps have dressed today, combined total of two receiving touchdowns. One by Nick Lewis, one by Jermaine Jackson. First and goal. Bryant on the end around. Robbie Bryant stopped in his tracks by Byron Parker back in an Argo uniform again. I don't know what you would even call what happened to Byron Parker <laughs> last year. Didn't play under the Bart Andrus regime and then went to Edmonton and then is back in Toronto. Yeah, strange odyssey for Byron Parker, but he's happy to be back. Robbie Bryant, not so happy to see him then. No. Oh, we'll get a good indication now of that red zone efficiency in game one here tonight for the Stamps. Second and goal. And Henry Burris will use a timeout time here out. and come over and chat with John Huffnagel and Dave Dickinson. We'll take a timeout. Come back to McMahon's Rona Canada today kickoff. It was a near perfect gathering. 37,000 was getting to know 22 grand. The 49,000s reminisced with the 29 nines. Yes, everyone with the Manulife One number was in a great mood. And why not? It's the amount of money and interest that they're saving. By combining your income, savings, and debt into the efficient Manulife One account, you could pay thousands less in interest, too. And that's a party you don't want to miss. Calculate your Manulife One number today at manulifeone.ca. Want more quality time? Steel makes yard work quick and...